Hello cherry lovers. We just wanted to stop in and real quickly say Happy New Year's to you guys. It's the beginning of a brand new year and yep. we're hoping that we'll have oodles and oodles of cherries. We're hoping. Happy New Year to all our cherry lovers out there. We're hoping that this year will be the year that all those cherries come in and yes. everything is going to go our way. We'll see. Got a lot going on this year, but uh, we're going to tell you that as we go along. But Happy New Year to you, and we hope that you guys are all going to have a great year. Hopefully 2020 will be a wonderful year. What do you say? Think so? Absolutely. I believe that it is. All right. Best year ever. So, Happy New Year to you guys, and we will see you in the next video. And that's coming up. And as always, have a great day. I intend to. Bye now. Hello, cherry lovers. Well, by the time you see this video, it'll be 2020. Uh, a lot of things gonna go on on the farm in 2020. Uh, the first half, January, February, and March, are quite slow months. We have, you know, it slows right down because we are a fruit farm, it slows down, so. What we got going on from April through September, October is quite a bit. Uh, I'll stop a minute right here and I'll show you uh, what the farm should look like far as uh, fruit and how many, cheer or how many trees we got. And that'll give you guys an indication of what's going on. I'll show you guys here in a minute. Okay, the lighting may be just a little off, but this is the, the plan for the cherry trees. As you can see where the line goes through, that is where, that's all the cherry trees we got right now. The, below that are the cherry trees that we're gonna uh, add on to in 2020. Uh, then we got our apple trees that we already have up there. And if they all live, then we got all of them. If not, if those trees don't survive, then 2020 we have the next set of trees that are coming so there's what the orchard or our farm will look like in 2020 if everything lives that's what we got so we got a lot going on right here we've got about i would say pretty close i'm going to say 250 trees maybe a little more 275 but that's what we got going on for 2020 for the trees anyway now as for the farm we uh, got a lot going on I got to put uh, uh, fence posts in fence rows fencing I've got to do all that uh, we're hoping this year that we have a fairly mild spring to where the flowers on the cherry trees so the cherries will produce and we'll have cherries this year if that's the case, then uh, we're going to have uh, we're going to have quite a few cherries because the trees have grown a whole bunch of this year, or in 2019. So we're going to have our share of cherries if uh, Mother Nature lets us. So that's the thing that we'll have going on somewhere time in June. But like I said, we got so much planned and so much going on. Like I say, between pick if the cherries come in, then we have to pick them. So that's going to be another thing that we'll have to do so we got quite a bit going on this year like I said especially with the fence rows having to plant those uh, well I think it's uh, 60 apple trees and we got an, I think I got another 45 cherry trees of different sorts coming so we got over a hundred trees that has got to be planted in the spring again so but like I said if you're gonna grow and, and expand then that's what has to happen we have to keep buying trees and expanding because sooner or later all these fruit trees are coming in and that's my goal my goal was always to start this uh, fruit farm and uh, become a big farm and produce a lot of fruit for a lot of people so this is my goal so this is what I got going on in 2020 so yes will the farm expand in 2020 oh very much so are we planning on expanding in 2021 Yes, it's my goal to expand even farther, but 
we're going to see what's happening. Yes, and we, we applied for a new high tunnel. Uh, will we get it? Uh, well, we're hoping so. The guy says that he doesn't. Uh, Kurt from the USDA says he doesn't see why we wouldn't. So uh, we're hoping for number three. If so, we've decided that looking at our high tunnel, seeing how we have oh probably 10 feet on either side inside the high tunnel we're not going to go ahead and get a hunter footer this time we're going to stick with the uh, uh, 30 by 72 because that'll cover all of our trees and we don't have to you know less uh, how do you want to say it uh, not only for the cost but also it will uh, the structure of it it's for up there with all the snow it's stronger and then stretching it out to 100 feet. So that's what we've come to conclusion on there. And we're, like I said, we're, we're hoping for it to come. If not, then like I said, we'll, we'll figure out something, but we're gonna keep buying the high tunnels for the cherry trees. Now we can't, we can't buy them for the apples because the apples don't do good under high tunnels. They haven't figured out what type of uh, apples will work under the high tunnel. So they're still experimenting on that. Uh, last year, I thought about getting cherries, not cherries. Last year, I thought about getting uh, blueberries, but we didn't get to the blueberries and get them put in. Uh, we're hoping this year, after we get the apples, if we have the money, and the money and the resources are there, I'm thinking about buying, I don't know, 100, 200 plants of uh, uh blueberry bushes and plant them in between where the cherries and the apples and we'll see how they go. I mean the wild blueberries grow really good up there uh, so we're thinking about putting in the domestic blueberries and see what happens. We're we're hopeful, hoping so. So we'll see. After through the winter if we see how bad the winter has been if uh, all the apple trees have lived then we'll be going to be planting a lot of trees. Uh, if they've died, I don't want them to die, but if they've di they die off a lot of them, then, then I have to put those replacement trees in the place of where I thought I was going to put them if they all live. But if they all live, like I said, we, we're going to have a heck of an orchard here, and I am happy, happy, happy to see that this orchard's growing, and all the trees are doing good, and we're expanding. And sooner or later, people, you guys are going to get to see the fruit of our labor. And that's no pun intended because sooner or later, the apple trees, they claim after two and a half years of the apple trees, they'll start producing apples. So we're going to see on that one because they're dwarfed rootstock and they'll stay a smaller tree so they produce faster. Uh, like I said, the cherries are supposed to be coming into production. Uh, we'll see on that. I hope so because I've been waiting, me and Joyce have been waiting for, uh, it's going on almost five years now and we're hoping, hoping, hoping and we're hoping for a good plentiful year. So that's what's going on right now and I just wanted to stop a minute and say, say to you guys, or tell you guys that that's what's happening this year in 2020. Like I said, I got a lot of fencing to put in. Got to keep the animals out of the apples. Not so much around the cherry trees because they're, you know, they're under the high tone. But out there where the apples are, haven't had any trouble with deer, but I know I'm gonna. So they might as well get the fence posts and get the fence again and and put it in. The when I put the fence in, I have to put. Uh, I'm gonna use what they call six foot chicken wire, and that'll get me up six foot and then I'm going to run two uh, lines above that to get me eight foot and that'll kind of deter the deer from jumping in there and getting anything. The chicken wire also down below what I've read was you got raccoons, you've got uh, all kinds of different little animals that love to eat on the tender leaves of apple trees so the chicken wire is kind of a deterrent for that not that they can't climb up and climb over but I'm putting that in because as I've read a lot of things online, that's the best bet instead of just going with regular fence fencing. Uh, so our cattle panels. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna give that a try and we'll see what happens. Like I said, it's all just a deterrent. If they want in bad enough, uh, like I say, I know that deer can jump over a eight foot fence. Uh, they can almost clear a 10 foot fence. So. 
it's just a deterrent. But that's what we're trying to do. We're going to be putting a lot of fencing in. Uh, for the rest of the apple trees, of course, we've got to add water lines. And so the water lines for the new cherry trees and the, the new apple trees are going in. And there's also going to be, hopefully, like I said, if all this is all about money anymore, people. If you got, we got the money. I want to put another well down because after I put this apples and cherries in, trees in, we're going to be overwhelmed with that water. Uh, they'll be on different timers, but basically if I time them out, I've figured out that the timer will be running or the different timers will run all day long. And the only relief the pump will get is at night until seven in the, mor seven in the morning until like nine o'clock at night. They'll be, it'll be running water to water those trees. So, so I'm hoping that we can get the, another well down and relieve the, the, one, the one well and it doesn't, they don't have to work overtime. So anyways, that's what I wanted to show you guys, tell you guys. And uh, like I said, this is into 2020 already. So happy new year. I uh, hope you guys have a blessed new year, a uh, very wonderful year. I hope the year works out for all of you, all of the homesteaders. I hope your farms and everything work good. And then just people that come and visit and any other community, love having you. And you guys have a blessed new year. And hopefully it'll be a wonderful year for everybody. So talk to you later, guys. Bye now.